when we talk about pulleys, we divide pulleys into three different kinds of pulleys. Because a pulley is a wheel and axle. It's a wheel that has a little bar going through it and it causes the wheel to turn around. Now the interesting thing about a pulley that separates it from a wheel and axle is that oftentimes the actual side of the circle here has a little rib in it. So if this is your wheel, okay, and then what ends up happening is a rope fits in that rib. A rope or a chain or whatever it is. And it's used, pulleys are used to hoist things up from the ground. They're used to move things. Now, depending on what kind of pulley you actually use, okay, you're going to get different results from those pulleys. And as we mentioned, there's three different kinds of pulleys. The simplest kind of pulley is referred to as a single fixed pulley. When I say single, I mean I, that's talking about the number of wheels that are in the system. The system is a pulley, okay? So if I'm talking about a single fixed pulley, I'm talking about a wheel that is attached to the ceiling like this. So whether it's a, a bracket, or a, you know, a hook or whatever, the wheel is stuck in place. The wheel can turn, but you can't lower the wheel and raise the wheel, okay? So this single fixed pulley here, all right? And actually, if we, actually, uh, if we were to draw this, we would have um, the notch here go right to the axle. Now, the interesting thing about a single fixed pulley, it does not have any mechanical advantage, okay? So a single fixed pulley basically works on the premise that you've got a rope and that rope goes around the actual wheel here and it's attached to your load, okay? So your load is here the effort force is in this direction, okay? So your effort is going downwards. What's going to happen to the load? The load's going to go up, exactly. So the load moves in that direction. Now, the interesting thing here is that there is no mechanical advantage. No M-A. And this means that it doesn't make it any easier for you to move an object using a single fixed pulley. So I know that you're asking yourself right now, why in God's name would we even use this if there's no like, mechanical advantage to it, if it's not going to make my life easier? Because that's what mechanical advantage does. It makes you put in less effort. This has no mechanical advantage, but it ends up being used because the load happens to be really big or awkwardly shaped. We're still going to put a lot of effort in it, but we couldn't otherwise raise the load because of its weird shape or large size, so we're just going to hoist it using the same amount of effort with a single fixed pulley. Okay, so this is single because of the one wheel and it's fixed because it's attached to the ceiling. So the second pulley we're going to talk about is actually a pulley system that is not attached to the actual um, ceiling. It's not fixed in place. I'm going to make this a wee bit smaller. Okay, now the interesting thing about this type of pulley, we've got our wheel and axle. In this case, we usually have something hanging off of it, and this is where our actual load ends up being. Our load ends up dangling from the actual pulley. Now notice the wall is up top. 
Right now, the pulley looks like it's levitating, floating in the air. We know that's not possible. The pulley is attached to the ceiling via a rope. It's not the pulley itself, as was the case here. This pulley was actually attached to the rope here, or attached to the ceiling there. We don't have that here. But what we do have is we have a rope that is attached or a chain that is attached to a ceiling. And that rope or chain comes around and the effort force in this case goes in which direction? It goes up. The effort force is going to go this way. What direction is the load going to go? The load is also going to go up. Because as this gets shortened, this whole wheel here, this whole actual object moves up. Okay? Now, what ends up happening here, here's where it starts to get interesting. Because of the configuration or the setup of this rope, half of the actual load force, because the load force down here Load force is equal to the object's weight, right? And we know that weight is actually the force of the object, which is equal to the mass of the object, times the coefficient of gravity. 10 newtons per kilogram, do you remember that? Way back when? Okay, now, what ends up happening here for mechanical advantage is half of the effort force required here is absorbed by this rope right here. This rope takes up one half of the effort force. That means that if this load has a mass of 10 kilograms, let's say, it would feel like you're actually only raising a box that was five kilograms because it's taking away, it's supporting half the weight. It's like two of you are lifting this, which means you only have to put in half the effort, okay? So the great thing about a single movable pulley is that it does have a high mechanical advantage, okay? MA is high here because you don't have to put as much effort in. If we go back to this guy, okay, your effort force is equal to the load force, which means if it's got a load force of 100 newtons, you have to put in an effort of 100 newtons to move that sucker. If this guy has a load force of 100 newtons, how many newtons do you have to put in? Only 50 because you only have to put in one half. So this means that you have a mechanical advantage here. This means if one half of the effort force is taken up by one of these ropes, that means that the person here only has to put in one half of the effort that he would have otherwise put in. Okay? So this is what kind of pulley? single movable. So now, if I asked you which one had the highest mechanical advantage between a single movable and a single fixed, what would you say? The single movable makes your life easier. It makes you, you can be lazier. You don't have to work as hard. Okay? So right, so far we still have two pulleys that only have one wheel but one of them has a higher mechanical advantage because of how they're set up. The final type of pulley involves having more than one wheel in the same system, right? So a multiple pulley system could have two wheels, it could have three, it could have four, it could have five, it could have a lot of wheels, all right? We're going to draw one here. So, even though this is still attached to the ceiling here, right, we got one, um, and then we're going to have, it's going to be attached to another one, 
and it's going to be attached to, let's say, another one here. Okay, so we've got three pulleys here. Do you see that? And they're all attached one to the other. Yeah? Okay, now, in this case, if I take a rope here and I draw in my effort in green, so if my effort comes in here, it's going to wrap around the first one, go all the way down the second one, and come out the third one. Do you see that? Do you see how we did that? Okay, so what we can do here is, and actually what I, what I really can do is I can sit here and I can draw it um, up around, down, now, and I can add my load force here. Your load force is just the weight of your load, is the weight of your object. Your load force is your object. So if I pull on my effort force in this direction, here's the interesting thing. Every actual pulley here will help cut down the amount of effort. Okay, so if I look at an image, if we look at the comparison between a single fixed pulley and a multiple pulley system, this is the pulley system we actually used right here in our previous drawing. Okay, so if we actually look at this, okay, this mass right here, they're telling you that the load force Okay, so the load force itself, right here, your LF is 100 newtons. So if you have a single fixed pulley, right here, same mass, you're going to have to put in 100 newtons of effort force. But if you have a multiple pulley system, it has an even higher mechanical advantage than a single movable pulley system. Okay, because the more actual wheels you add means the more rope is in the pulley. And the more rope that is in the pulley going from wheel to wheel, so in this case we've got a rope here, right? We've got a rope going from this pulley to this pulley, and then we've got the rope that the load is on right here. Every one of those ropes is absorbing part of the effort force. It's making it so that you have to do less. Okay? So ideally, a multiple pulley system, all right, a multiple pulley system will have the highest... MA. It'll be higher than a single fixed pulley big time, and it'll even be much higher than a, than a, a single movable pulley because there are multiple ropes here absorbing, going between wheel to wheel, absorbing that load force, taking some of that load force off of what effort you have to put in. But here's the catch. The more pulleys you have, the more friction you have, right? So we remember that friction, right? We remember that friction is a force that opposes motion. So here you would have friction here, 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 and you would have friction at every one of your wheel and axles. So at some point, putting more and more and more wheels on this thing is just going to add and add and add your friction. Okay, so having a multiple pulley system with 50 wheels on it is not useful because there's too much friction. But having a multiple pulley system with like three or four or even two wheels on it has a higher mechanical advantage than just having one pulley.